Congressman Jeff Fortenberry was convicted of three felonies in federal court in Los Angeles yesterday. It took the jury two hours to find that Fortenberry lied and misled the FBI. This leaves his political future in serious question. 3 News Now reporter John Kipper joins us in studio and tells us what leaders are asking Fortenberry to do. Vanessa, the repercussions came fast for the longtime Lincoln congressman today. Governor Pete Ricketts said the first district, which does include much of Sarpy County, deserves an active in certain representation and that Fortenberry should do the right thing. Now, Ricketts was not alone in his calls for resignation. Nine-term Congressman Jeff Fortenberry was convicted Thursday in federal court of two counts of lying to the FBI and one count of concealing campaign donations. Well, Fortenberry said he'll appeal on Friday. Leaders of the House of Representatives said he still needs to quit. Speaker Nancy Pelosi said in a statement his conviction represents a breach in public trust and confidence in his ability to serve. Republican leader Kevin McCarthy still had to call him this morning but said Fortenberry should resign. I'm going to discuss with him today. I think he had his day in court, and I, I think if he wants to appeal, he can go do that as a private citizen. But uh, I, I think out of respect, you can let me talk to him today. But I think when someone's convicted, it's time to resign. Creighton political science professor Rich Whitmer says if Fortenberry stays in office, he'll likely be ineffective. While also saying it would be nearly impossible for him to win re-election. I mean, this was a conviction about rate fundraising. Who's going to want to give a congressman who's con been convicted of a felony money for his race? So it's going to be hard to raise money. If Fortenberry does step down by August, there would be a special election for the 1st District. Assistant Secretary of State Sidney Allen said the governor would call an election within 90 days of the resignation. We haven't seen it in Nebraska, um, but it's not all that uncommon. Both the Democrats and Republican parties can choose one candidate who can fill the end of the term. That being said, there would still be a primary election in May and the general in November for voters to pick the candidate for the next two years. As for who may take over, the seat has been in GOP hands since the 1960s, leaving State Senator Mike Flood as the favorite. State Senator Patty Pansy Brooks is the top contender for the Democratic nomination. She said Friday that the Fortenberry news made her sad. I'm, I'm sure that we're going to be the brunt of, of some jokes about the fact that we've hired or we've, we've elected this person who uh, has been federally uh, charged and found guilty. And I, I think it, unfortunately, at times can rub off on our, our district and our state. House ethics rules do not allow Congress members to vote if they've been convicted of a felony until the voters reelect them. Recently, two Republican congressmen, Duncan Hunter and Chris Collins, were forced to step down for similar reasons that Fortenberry is about to encounter. Reporting in the studio, John Kipper, 3 News Now.